down in Fayetteville, they have hired John Calipari to be the new head coach at Arkansas. Uh, now, we can talk all day long about John Calipari to Arkansas and go through that if we want to. I have a bigger question, I think, which is, are college basketball jobs still what they used to be, right? At one point in time, Kentucky was the biggest job in college basketball. That's where everybody wanted to be, everything they were doing. I remember when I was in college, they broke out like that dorm that was just for basketball players. And uh, you had like your own personal chef there for the players. And like, it was only basketball players and girls and stuff like that. So it was like the place everybody wanted to be. John Calipari, he won in 2012. And I went to school in Kentucky. So that was fun when I was uh, just getting into there as freshman. But, you know, just a crazy, crazy time. Kentucky was the uh, just the best job in college basketball. Here we find ourselves 12 years later and the Kentucky basketball coach is leaving for Arkansas. Now we can say all we want about Arkansas, you know, has a booster with a lot of money and that kind of stuff. But I feel like something is changing here in college basketball. And Ryan, I'm, I'm curious your thought on it. Let's start with this. Is Kentucky still one of or the best jobs in college basketball? I would say from a stature of, you know, relevancy of, you know, history, yes. But again, what's important to the man that's the coach? Because Calipari's leaving because of just the the fan base, I think. And he knows that the NIL situation too, he can go and make it easy. If he can go someplace where it's going to be a lot easier for him, where he doesn't have to really delve into the NIL situation. Nowadays, like 10 years ago, I would say yes. Five years ago, probably. But, you know, I'm not sure anymore. I think it's more of where are you going to get the most NIL, but have less stress for the coach. Like, there's a reason that Coach K's retired, that Bayheim's out of it, why Jay Wright left. It's this new NIL free agency is driving these guys crazy because you got to like examples. The Illinois coaches were preparing for an Elite Eight game and they got to do Zooms with transfer portal kids, you know? Like they're supposed to be focusing on the game, but they can't because if you get behind, you're done. You're screwed. All those teams that aren't playing, what do you think they're doing? You know, I think this is just a lot as as coaches get older and, and it's the reason that. You know, Brad Underwood's 60. Like, is he going to want to be doing this when he's 70? You know, it's not good for the heart. Uh, and um, Calipari wants to go somewhere where he can at least take one of those avenues out of the picture and having to worry about how much NIL or is he going to have to delve into it and go create and get more. He doesn't have to do that at Arkansas now. And I think more and more places – like an example would be Oregon and Phil Knight. They're not going to have any problems, I don't believe, with NIL. So there are jobs where you're looking at, like, what's funded here? Where does it funnel through? You know, and I don't know how that is at Kentucky, but it doesn't sound like it's something that, that, that Calipari wanted to deal with anymore. And that fan base, which I got to say, though, the fan base has every right to be upset with, the the you know, how well the team has done the last three or four years, you know? When you're losing in the first round as a, four seed or a three seed that there's reasons that the fan base should be upset when you have all the talent in the world and you have a great staff. So Calipari can't really use that in my opinion as an excuse because the fan base was upset with them. I just think it was getting toxic and he needed a place to go to get out of there where he doesn't have to worry about the NIL. Good points. What do you think Russ? Yeah. I mean, it's still, you know, Kentucky's still a top five job in the country because they're going to get paid like a top five coach and they probably got top five coffers for NIL. So I, I don't, I think the biggest change is what Ryan kind of alluded to there, which was the fan base in that social media makes these players and coaches so much more accessible. And these kids and these coaches see that, you know, and I know the, the, the boomers and the oldies even might say, well, that's they're they're a power five division one athlete. They need to handle it. That's it comes with the territory. And it's like, you know, Painter even talked about it post the UConn loss and how amazing it is for these kids for Purdue to have, to have kept the roster together because when you lose a game, you go home, you look at Twitter, and they're basically saying, Oh, he's a bum. He needs to not start, he needs to transfer, or 
even you win a game, and this is you, you know the Kentucky fan base is well known for this. You win a game, and they're going, "Oh, they should have won it by thirty, not twelve. They're terrible. They need to do this and switch this. This guy's terrible. I can't believe you kept letting him shoot." And but you know, so it's it's just so much more accessible. Like it used to be, you just dealt with it at the arena, you went home, played video games with the boys, you know, went and got something to eat, whatever. You didn't have to keep dealing with it, but it's still in everybody's face, and I think that has a a bigger effect on the modern day transfer portal than NIO really does because these players are going to make money pretty much everywhere at these major programs. You're just talking a difference of like, you know, is it 600,000 versus 400,000? Is it 1 million versus 750? Like, and you know, yes, a bigger figure may mean something to these kids, but I think a lot of these kids still want to win. You know, they don't want to go to a lower university just to make an extra couple hundred thousand because their goal is still to make the NBA and make millions. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some guys that they know that their future is never really in the NBA, that they're going to be good college players. And so I do think NIL might matter a little bit more to those guys. Um, Acock from North Carolina, prime example. Yeah. Another guy that comes to my mind is uh, Robbie uh, Avil- Avilia, or whatever, however you pronounce his name, from Indiana State. It's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to- sir. I know, right? Um, probably yeah, going to say Those Lewis goggles now. do make it hard to decipher who it is. You're right. Yeah. Did you um, see his? Uh, I looked him up on. Um, I think it was twenty four seven today to see if there's a crystal ball or anything, any news on him yet. His photo on twenty four seven even looks like a Clark Kent photo. Like he's in it? a suit and everything. Like he looks all like it's like a LinkedIn profile picture. Like go check that out. So he needs a Clark Kent Superman type nickname now too. Yeah, that's awesome. To me, it was pretty obvious he was going to go follow his coach to slew Josh Shirts. You know, I think, and I, yeah. someone told me in, on his portal page. He has the do not contact sign up. It was like the, you know, the hotel do not disturb sign you put on your door. Yeah. Uh, awesome. He put that on there. Like, don't say shit to me <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> because uh, I don't, don't, don't say anything to me because I'm, I'm going to slew. So, right. Um, so when we look at these college basketball jobs and I know everybody wants us to talk about Illinois, we'll get to that in just a second. When we look at these college basketball jobs. All right. We look at North Carolina. They hired, the next coach to be as somebody who was an assistant coach and Hubert Davis Duke. They did the same thing. They hired John Shire. You look at somebody like Syracuse, they hired uh what's his name? Uh, Adrian Autry or something like that. Um, didn't have the most fantastic year this year. Uh, now his first year. So, you know, give him some credit there, but still, and now you have Kentucky looking at all these different coaches and you got Dan Hurley saying, no, my wife's not going to let me go there. Billy Donovan says, I want to stay with the Chicago bulls. I mean, like are the best jobs in the country now? Are they, are they the ones with the biggest NIL? Like, is it going to be Oregon that gets the best coaches? Is it going to be Arkansas who who just has a donor that wants to see the basketball team win? Is it going to be somebody like Miami that's going to start having the best jobs because they have incredible NIL where they can just look at these players and pay them? I, I think you guys are right. I think that, you know, a lot of these players can go someplace and get, you know, money and, and play. But at a certain point, you can you can only pay so many players, and so do coaches look at this and say, "I'd much rather go someplace. Maybe I don't get paid as many millions of dollars, but if I have a five five uh, million dollar NIL war chest, that's uh, that's something that's really attractive to them." Russ, do you do you see that, or do you think that I'm just kind of out there and rethinking college basketball too much? I mean, I can see it both ways. I can see it both ways. I mean, you look at uh, there's still some basketball kind of what we saw in football really last year where you know, somebody's coach gets stolen because they're going up, moving up high. So then they steal somebody else's coach and then they steal somebody else's coach and then they steal somebody else's coach. So that you still see a lot of that going on. I think it's just, it's situation based. You know, if you're in a place like, you know, Dan Hurley's obviously won back to back NCAA championships at a, you know, power six school, you know, I know big East, maybe sometimes it included with the power five, but you know, UConn's now won six championships in the last 25 years. So there, you know, I don't know, you know, yeah, if he, if he wins a championship at, at say like a, a non powerhouse school, like a Cincinnati or, you know, something like that. Like I can see him saying, okay, let me move up to where there's more money, but obviously he has the the tools to win. He probably lives quite the comfortable life and he's probably not getting the hate that some of these other coaches are getting. And, you know, UK, UK is a, it's a desirable job, but it's also a hotbed of scrutiny, right? Like you've got all eyes on you and that, that is a very critical fan base. And why would a coach that just won two national titles want to put himself in that situation if he's in a spot where he can win? In a, in a major conference. It might not be the Big Ten or the SEC or whatever, but it's still a major conference. So I, I think it's I think it's a situational-based thing. Makes sense. Makes sense. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, um, 
You know, I think here, a couple examples too. You know, Kyle Neptune at Villanova. What kind of success has he had since Jay Wright left? Right. You know, here's one. Uh, Brad Underwood left Oklahoma State, and they hired Mike Boynton. Okay. He has struggled majority of the years at Oklahoma State. The only year he didn't struggle is when they had Cade Cunningham. You know, and even uh, that, I feel like you could say that they were kind of under expectations with an in, in, NBA player like that on the roster, wouldn't you? Say? Yeah, I mean, I think they were a four or a five seed, but still, yeah. Like yeah. my point is, is, is that you know, every institution's different, but the, this assistant to head coach thing really hasn't really, you know, especially with the bigger programs, been super successful. I think going into you know, like like a Michigan hiring a Dusty May, super smart in my opinion. You know, like I think he has proven um, his what he can do at FAU. I think they didn't go and hire maybe some other Michigan man or whatever. I think that's a smart hire. You know, and and it, the, the Ohio State ones is kind of odd for me, but I think Dabler Dabler earned it because he proved he, what he can do. I think with the end of the year, I think he's proven himself. It wasn't like he had never coached a game before and we're like, hey, we're going to make you the coach. I think you, he got an audition to see, like, what can he do? Uh, so other than that, I think it's I think it's smart to hire guys that have had proven success and, and are working their way up uh, program-wise. But definitely having a, a great NIL source doesn't hurt. Yeah, makes it attractive for sure. So – 